What's going on, everybody? I know exam season might be coming up, so let's go over chain rule briefly through four examples, all right? So the tip of the day that we're gonna start off with is to always identify uh, your inner and outer functions, okay? And what I mean by that um, is that when you're using the chain rule, you're using it when, you're, when you have cases that look like this, right? That's not my pen that looks like this, right? F of G of X. So basically you're, you're gonna have some function inside of another. And so the key tip here is to know how many functions do I have, okay? So in this first example here, we have F of X is equal to sine of five X squared plus three, okay? In here, to simplify when we do the chain rule, I'm gonna use variables, okay? And so I'm gonna start defining the inside functions, and you'll see what I mean when I start doing that. So in this case, I'm gonna say let u equal just the stuff on the inside, because you notice that we have five x squared plus three, that's gonna be the stuff on the inside collectively, if you wanna think of it like that. And then on the outside, you have the sign of that stuff, right? The sign of that stuff. And so here first, we're gonna let u equal five x squared, plus three, okay? And now, since this is a generally simple function for now, uh, we're gonna continue with this, okay? So because we substituted u for all this stuff inside, I wanna note that u is still a function of x, meaning the value of u, right, still depends on what the value of x is, the variable. So it's a function of x, and therefore we can take a derivative with respect to x, okay? And so when we're doing the chain rule, we said conceptually, we can think of this as taking the derivative of the inside function, in this case, this material, and multiply that by the outer function, right? The sine of this. And so it's gonna look like this. When I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of f of x, right, this whole thing over here, this is gonna be equal to the derivative, in our case, first of, of sine of u, right? We're gonna go from outer to inner, okay? So outermost is gonna be the sine of this stuff here, u. We're gonna multiply that by the derivative with respect to x of go in one layer. Now, just the stuff on the inside, okay? In that case, the derivative of this stuff, u. And so now, when we multiply these two together, we're gonna to work it out, okay? So for this first part, the derivative of the sine of u, right? Just like the sine of x is just the cosine of u. So in this case, this first term is just gonna be the cosine of u. This first part is done, and we do not need to alter it any further. We're gonna to wait to the last step to replace or plug back in five x squared plus three for this letter u here, but we're gonna to wait to the end so we don't get it super messy. Now let's move on to the second term, the inner term. This is gonna be represented by the derivative with respect to x of this stuff. Let me just write it out so we can see it a bit better, okay? This is gonna be on this side. And so you know that when we're taking the derivative of a math equation, right, a function with more than one term, all we're gonna do is take our derivative and we are going to apply it to each term inside. And so in here, this is equal to, cosine of u stays the same, this is multiplied by whatever the entire derivative is. So keep that in mind, especially when you have negatives, okay? In this case, we have positives, so we're fine. The derivative of five x squared using the power rule is two times five is 10. Leave that x there, subtract one from the exponent, two minus one is one. So I'm gonna leave it just like that, okay? Plus the derivative of three. Three is a number or a constant the derivative of a constant is always zero, okay? Now, all we have to do is put this stuff together. So 10x times cosine of u is 10x cosine of 
you, since this is our very last step, let's substitute back in all the stuff we had before. Okay, now you're gonna see the advantage of substituting. So this is gonna be 5x squared plus three, okay? And so now this is our final derivative using the chain rule. Okay? Now let's move on to one that's a little bit harder. The difference that you're gonna notice between these two is that number two, has an extra layer, if you will, right? We were talking about going from our inner functions, identifying those, and looking at how many we have. In this case, that we just solved, you only had one inside, and then you had one more outside, right? In here, you have two x cubed plus three x squared. This is our innermost. When you go out one, you have tangent of this, right? And then you go out one more, you have cosine of this. And so we have one more layer than we did before, okay? And so now let's do the same thing we did up here and let's use variables to simplify. So let's let u equal the innermost stuff. So 2x cubed plus 3x squared, all right? That's the innermost, we're done. And remember, keep in mind that u is a function of x because u depends on x, right? So now let's go out one more layer. You have tangent of u, right? And so now let's assign that to another variable, v. v is equal to the tangent of u, okay? In this case, v is also a function of x, okay? And now we can go out one more right so let's call this w and w is going to be defined by the cosine of v so do you see how every time we go we're going from the innermost out one layer outermost layer okay innermost out one layer out outermost layer okay and just for continuity i'll write down this and so now when we do the chain rule to take the derivative with respect to x, right, with respect to x of our entire function here, right, and the shorthand is 5, f prime x, sorry about that, that's going to be the derivative with respect to x of each of our values here, right, so it's going to be the derivative of w, I always multiply from outside to inside just to have it multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of v, multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of u, okay? Now that we have it written simply, you can see the outline, you can see what you need to fill in. So let's write them out just so we can see what we're dealing with here. So the derivative of w, w is cosine of v, that's the first term. The second term is derivative with respect to x of v, which is tangent of u multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of just u, which is gonna be all this stuff, okay? And so now you can see the advantage of using these variables because now you're not mixed up, right, between getting um, a really large expression in your equation when you don't need it, all right? So the first one, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? So just like the cosine of x, cosine of v is treated the same way. So cosine of v, the derivative is negative sine of v. That's our first term finished. And we're gonna leave that until our last step where we will replace our variable, okay? Second term. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, right? And just like x, treat u the same. We use a function of x. We'll replace that later. That's done. Now, the last one, the derivative of this function, right? It's just going to be the derivative of the first term plus the derivative of the second term. So in this case, it's going to be the derivative of the first term is 3 times 2 is 6x. Subtract 1 from there, which is 2 plus two times three, six, 
leave that x there, subtract one, that's gonna be a one here, okay? And that's all that is there. Now, we can replace, um, and you can, you can foil all this out or distribute out if you need to, um, but I'm just gonna replace the v and the u, and I'm gonna keep it um, moving just to keep the scope of the lesson, okay? So negative sine of v is tangent of u. I'm gonna replace all that back. Tangent of all this stuff, 2x cubed plus 3x squared, bang, all right? Times secant squared of u, which is just 2x cubed plus 3x squared, okay? Multiplied by 6x squared plus 6x. And I'm gonna leave it like it is seen here, okay? And you can feel free to unpack that if you'd like. Let me just box this. Okay. All right, so go ahead and pause if you need to, but if not, I'm gonna go to this page. We're gonna do two more that are gonna be a little bit harder than the ones before, but we'll get through it together, all right? So this is gonna look a little more difficult. It's just gonna seem like that, but it's not, right? So this is f of x is equal to sine squared of two x squared plus three x over tangent x. Now, that's a mouthful, okay? So a big tip when you're looking at functions, limits, derivatives, whatever it is, you don't wanna just jump into your problem and start chunking up numbers everywhere. You wanna look at it and ask yourself, can I simplify this or make it, or put it into a form that I can better recognize, okay? So when I look at this, I think, okay, let's do this instead, right? So let's do all this stuff here, sine of two x squared plus three x over tangent of x, right? I'm gonna move this box, there we go. All this stuff is squared. This shown in orange is the equivalent of this shown in black, the same exact thing, okay? And so now, again, we're gonna ask ourselves, how many, how many parts or pieces of this do we have, okay? So the innermost, right, the innermost material is this fraction right here. So I'm gonna say let u equal 2x squared plus 3x over tangent of x, okay? Same concept. And again, u is a function of x because u depends on x, right? Let's go out one, okay? So now v is gonna be the sine of u, okay? v is gonna be the sine of u. All right, and then out one more, right? All this stuff is being squared, okay? Think of all this stuff inside as just the stuff inside being squared. So we're gonna use another variable, w is going to be v squared, all right? So u, v, w, they're all a function of x, Okay, and so we're gonna do the same thing we did before. So using the chain rule, the derivative with respect to x, right, because it's a function of x, of our entire function is going to be, in the shorthand as well, is gonna be the derivative of all these individual parts, x2, and I like to go from outer to inner, times the derivative with respect to x of v, times the derivative with respect to x of you. So I hope you're catching um, the, the rhythm of this, right? Uh, and trying to adapt it to, to your understanding. And so again, I'm gonna write these out just to make sure we know what we're dealing with, right? This is the outline, now let's start to fill it in. W is V squared, okay? Times the derivative with respect to X of V, which is sine of U times the derivative 
the derivative, sorry, with respect to x of u, it's a bit late, don't know if anyone can tell, plus over tangent x. Okay, now we have what we're trying to solve for. So let's pick it off piece by piece. The derivative um, of v squared, just like x squared, right, would be 2x. In this case, it's going to be 2v. This part's done. We'll wait till the last step to, to replace that v back, okay? Derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Treat u the same way. Derivative of sine u is cosine u. And again, we'll replace that later. Now this part, it's a fraction. And if you thought that you needed to do the uh, quotient rule, you're right, okay? And so in this one, I'm gonna actually write the general formula, f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. You know that f prime and g prime are the derivative of the top, f prime. The derivative of the bottom is g prime. Okay, and then f and g are just the top and bottom, all right? So let's continue this up here. So we have 2v cosine u so far multiplied by, all right, so f prime is the derivative of the top, derivative of 2x squared plus 3x, that is going to be 4x plus 3, all right? multiplied by g, which is just the bottom, the tangent x, okay? Minus g prime f, g prime, the derivative of tangent is secant squared x times f, which is just the top, 2x squared plus 3x. All this is over g squared, just the bottom squared tangent squared x, okay? And so now this is what we got. And again, it's looking really extensive. So all I'm gonna do now is replace the v and the u, and you're, gonna, you're welcome to, to hash this out if you'd like, okay? Um, but again, just to keep the scope of the lesson in mind, I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible, 2x squared plus 3x over tangent x and then cosine of 2v. Yep, cosine of u, 2x squared plus 3x over tan x. And then uh, all this stuff, I'm just going to write it as a dash. You're welcome to pause and copy that down if you'd like, okay? <laughs> okay, so this is going to be our f prime x for this one. So we're done with this one. Now, let's go to this last one we have down here. Now, the difference here is that you're gonna see we're using cosecant, okay, which um, most of you may know cosecant is going to be one of those trig identities or properties that you want to know. Cosecant is the equivalent of one over sine, okay? Cosecant is one over sine. Also in here, you'll notice the A, B, and C, okay? These are the equivalent of numbers. When, when constants are presented to you in the form of letters like A, B, C, whatever, T, P, right? Any form of a letter that's specified as a constant um, can be treated just like a number, essentially. So let's, again, use our first rule, right, that we said we're going to turn functions or equations into a form that we can recognize or better work with. And so we just said that cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine, right? So cosecant of this stuff is equivalent of 1 over sine of the same stuff. So it becomes this, okay? So now this looks a lot more friendly and it's equivalent to this, right? Same stuff. So now this is our f of x and all we have to do to take the derivative of this is to use the quotient rule because it is a fraction, okay? And so to do this, 
let's take the derivative of f of x, and that's going to be f prime, f prime x. I'm going to write out the general form f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. I always recommend writing this out for yourself so you have a map of what you're doing. And so let's, let's just fill this thing out. f prime is the derivative of the top, because the top is f, bottom is g. Okay? f prime is going to be 0, so this whole first part is going to be zeroed out, minus the second part. The derivative of g, or the bottom, right? We're going to chain rule this again, right? So the inside is u, right? And then the outside is sine of u, and we need to take the derivative of both of those, okay? And so just to continue with the theme here, I'm going to write this out, okay? So we said I like to write it from outer to inner. So I'm going to write this as sine of u and use a function of x multiplied by the derivative of just u. And in this case, u is equal to all that stuff inside, right? Plus c, okay? It's all that stuff in here. And so, and all this stuff is going to be multiplied by the original f. All this will still be over g squared, okay? So, um, here we go. So, 0 minus the derivative of sine of u, right, is just going to be this cosine of u, first part, multiplied by the derivative of u. And I'm going to put a square bracket because this minus sign needs to be distributed to the entire answer of our derivative inside, okay? So be careful of those distributions of those negative signs. Um, and so u is going to be the derivative of ax squared. And so the derivative of ax squared is 2 times a, right? 2 times a is 2a. Variable stays there, x. And then you subtract 1 from the exponent. It's 1, so I'll leave it like so. Plus the derivative of the second term, bx. So this is technically bx to the 1, right? Same thing. So 1 times b is b, leave your x there, subtract one. One minus zero is zero. Anything raised to the zero power is actually one. So x to the zero is actually one, so I'm actually gonna get rid of that x, all right? And then plus the derivative of c, we said that a, b, and c are all constants, and we said that the derivative of a constant is always zero, you got it. And so that's it for that, all right? All this will be divided by the bottom of the squared. So sine squared of ax squared plus bx plus c. And again, treat letters that are, that are given to you as constants like numbers, okay? Uh, multiplied by uh, f, okay? We're still filling this out. f, which is the top part, which is one which is fine. Um, okay, cool. So uh, we got it right here. And so let me just make it look a little bit nicer. So we have negative cosine of u times 2ax plus b all over sine squared ax squared plus bx plus c. All right. So this is our f prime x for this, okay? And so those were the four problems that I wanted to cover in terms of going over more umbrella topics. Um, so again, utilize these, this variable kind of strategy if you want to, just to be able to, to not get mixed up essentially, okay? So locate, again, your innermost function, right? Give that a variable, go out one layer, right? Um, in this case, I mean, you go, this is the innermost, you go out one, it's going to be the sign of the innermost variable. So give that another variable. Go out one more, it's going to be this variable being squared, right? So we gave it another variable. When you're going to do the chain rule, all you have to do is find the derivative 
of all of the variables that you've assigned essentially and multiply them together. Okay. Uh, and one more thing before we um, wrap up here. Uh, these are the common trig functions that are going to help you a lot if exams are coming up, if you need to know certain, um, to be quick on your feet essentially. Um, these are going to be the core ones you need to know, the six on the left. So sine, cosine, and tangent, you probably already know um, by SOHCAHTOA, right? Uh, and they're written up here as well. Um, just know that cosecant is the equivalent of one over sine, secant is the equivalent of one over cosine, and cotangent is the same thing as one over tangent, okay? And so this is the triangle uh, in both orientations, uh, if you're gonna need it, relative to these theta angles. Um, and these are just um, just extras in case you encounter these. So the in, these are both inverses. So sine and cosecant have an inverse relationship. So the inverse of sine is cosecant. The inverse of cosecant is sine. Uh, and the same thing with the rest of these trig functions. Okay. Um, and so if, um, yeah, I hope you got through it. And if you understand everything, that's great. Um, and if you have questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, okay? Have a nice day, everyone.